How to Write an Anecdote, Part 1, Why They Are Perfect to Power Narrative Essays, Especially for College Applications. An anecdote is a funny word that means a mini-story from real life. It usually is only a paragraph or two in length and covers something that took place over a few minutes. An anecdote also shares a brief moment or incident from a larger experience. Usually it captures the most exciting or interesting part. Anecdotes are everywhere. You can find them in magazine stories, newspaper articles, blog posts, ads, almost all types of writing. Usually they're featured at the start of a piece of writing, but they are also used in other parts. They're ideal for starting narrative style essays used for college applications and personal statements. Anecdotes are easier to understand when you read them for yourself. Here's one that was written by a student named Ruth Mendoza for a college application essay. In this anecdote that she used to start her essay, Ruth described this simple real-life moment when someone thought she was a waitress, apparently because she was Hispanic. Did you see how Ruth's anecdote read like fiction, even though it was about a true experience? That's part of what makes them so powerful in writing. They are stories that really happened, but they are told using a fiction writing style and writing techniques. A lot of the best ones you couldn't even make up. Usually they capture a time or little event that was unusual or surprising or unexpected. In Ruth's anecdote, she captured a moment that was unexpected. A stranger asked her something that had bigoted overtones. Many anecdotes capture a moment like this, which was unexpected or dramatic or even funny. This is one reason they grab your attention. There's almost always a point to an anecdote. There's a reason the writer shared a moment or incident from real life. Usually an anecdote is an example of a point someone is trying to make. It illustrates something else. In Ruth's anecdote, she was using this moment or interaction as an example of a larger issue, bigotry, prejudice, or discrimination. In the rest of her essay that followed this anecdotal introduction, she went on to talk about how that incident made her feel, how she handled it, and what she learned. Show with an anecdote. Remember how writing teachers always advise to show not tell in good writing? An anecdote is one of the best ways of showing. Show or tell. Which is better? In the first paragraph, this is one way Ruth could have started her essay, by just telling us about what happened in general terms. The second example is an anecdote she actually used in her essay where she showed us what happened. Which would you find more engaging or interesting to read? Another reason anecdotes are so powerful in writing is that they can add credibility to your point. By giving a real-life example of what you're talking about, you're proving your point. Ruth could have told us she experienced discrimination in her life, but we are more likely to believe her when she proves it with a real-life incident. Another reason anecdotes are so powerful is that they help your reader empathize with you. That means that they can almost stand in your shoes for a minute and feel what it's like to be you. That's why when you write an anecdote, you use literary writing tools, such as setting the scene, a snippet of dialogue, and descriptive details to recreate the moment for the reader. The best ones make you feel as though you were there. When you use an anecdote in writing, especially at the start of a piece, such as an essay, you start in the middle of the action. There's little to no build-up or introduction. You just start right before whatever happened happened. This is why they pack such a punch. You start with the best stuff. Also, since anecdotes are really mini-stories, they feature something that happened. It can either have real action or emotional or psychological action. For Ruth, the action was the moment the lady insulted her. Writers use anecdotes at the start of an article or blog post or ad essay because that action is the best way to hook and grab the reader. When something happens, it's hard to look away. An anecdote or real-life mini-story not only grabs a reader, but gets them hooked as well. Most anecdotes only share a small piece of the story, usually the climax or a highlight or a, a specific action, but they don't give it all away. There's little or no setup, and then it ends as quickly as it starts. You keep reading because you want to know how it all ended. For Ruth, that lady insulted her, and you want to know what she did about it, so you keep reading. Let's assume that you now have a good idea of why writers use anecdotes. They hook the reader and keep them wanting more. So how exactly do you write your own? First, you find a good story and the rest just takes practice. The best place to start looking for a real-life mini-story to spin into an anecdote is to figure out what point you want to make. In an essay, this would be called your main point. In a college application essay, especially one that's supposed to be a personal statement about you, you need to know what is the main point you're going to make about yourself. Then you can start looking for real-life examples of that point. 
One student, Brooks Johnson, wanted to write his college application essay about how he not only learned to push his limits to excel at a new sport, rowing crew, but that he actually discovered he enjoyed that he had to be a little crazy to push himself that hard. So instead of telling the reader this, he gave us a real-life example. Instead of describing or telling us how hard it was, he proved it with a specific example of a time of a brutal workout. He used details to help us picture the situation. We could almost feel his pain. This is what you want to do with an anecdote. The best way to find a great real-life story for your anecdote is to find one that involved a problem. The problem can come in many shapes, from a challenge to a mistake, a life change, a personal flaw or hang-up, a conflict, a misunderstanding. There are many types of problems out there. If your anecdote involves a problem, it will also be a powerful little story. Now that you have a real-life story, one that involved a problem also serves as an example of the point you want to make in your essay, it's time to put it together. The best way is to first just write it out and, and go in chronological order. Then go back and chop out everything you didn't need to still convey what happened. Anecdotes take practice. Here's some of the basic rules. Use first person, stick to the past tense, go with chronological order, set the scene, use descriptive writing and sensory details, include a little dialogue, make sure something happened, feature a problem, stick to just one or two paragraphs, include only what you need to recreate the moment, write it out first then cut it down, try to start as close to the action as possible, and don't wrap it all up. Leave the reader hanging. Once you learn how to craft your own anecdotes, you can use them for all sorts of writing. They're perfect to start narrative-style essays for college applications. You can also use them to bring life to all types of writing, everything from a college term paper to a query letter for a job to writing a blog, post, or an ad. The whole point is that instead of telling someone you point, you start by showing them a real-life example. It gets them every time. Now that you know why anecdotes are so powerful and have an idea of where to find your real-life stories, watch the second part of How to Write an Anecdote, Part 2. In this next video, I will step you through the process of spinning a real-life moment or incident into an anecdote that reads like fiction. Want more help? Go to my blog, www.sahell.com, where you'll find tons of advice, tips, instruction, and inspiration on how to write college application essays. Good luck.